Hi family, welcome to Sweet Truth. Do you dare listen? Yo, today's a new week. It is a blessed day. It is a day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Today I will be reading from Jonah 4, 1 to 11. Yo, it is that time again. The end of the season. The very last episode to this season and you don't know how I get to the end of every season it's kind of like bittersweet where it's like wow like you know I'm glad to move on and learn other things you know but other sometimes like wow like I really learned a lot from that and I wish I could continue reading this and I wish there was more to this <laughs> so it's all good though, like, I'm not that emotional, you know, I just, it's been an honor and a blessing just, you know, learning about Jonah and just seeing this whole side to um, one of the most interesting, if not the most interesting <laughs> prophets of God in the Bible, amen, and I stand by my word of wanting to take Jonah on a coffee date and just like, you know, ask him so many questions because I am so curious what kind of a prophet this was <laughs> what kind of person was he you know I I feel like he had so many other issues going on behind you know so like I would just love to sit, to sit down with him and just uh see his side of things and just get his perspective of things you know because you know how, how they say that there is a uh, two sides to a story, though I don't really see one in Jonah's case. But I, was, I would still love to take him out for a coffee date and just, um, yeah, uh, see what was going on through his mind uh, at that time. So with that being said, let us pray and then we can get right into it. So Father God, I just want to thank you for this day, Father God. You've Send us through the weekend, Father God, and I pray, Father God, that you will see us through this week, Father God, that you will continue to bless us, Father God, and provide for us, and heal us, Father, and be there for us, and surround us with your grace, your mercy, your, your goodness, your loving goodness, Father God. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your compassion, Father God. Your compassion in our lives, Father God, that oversees us through. And Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, may you be with us, go before us, and bless us. Speak through us, Spirit of the living God, and guide our ways, guide our paths. Thank you for everything that you do for us, God. Thank you for who you are, Father God. Today, Father, we honor you. We worship you. We bless you, Father. Thank you for the book of Jonah, Father God. Thank you for helping us learn and see, Father, a whole new perspective, Father God, to your compassion, Father God, to your love and favor, to your forgiveness, to who you are, Father God. You are a loving Father, a compassionate Father, a forgiving Father, a healing Father. You are all things great, God. And so I honor you today, Father God. And I worship you today, Father God. And I respect you, Father God. And I love you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yo, God is so good. So today I will be reading from the NIV version. Again, that is Jonah 4, 1 to 11. It reads, But to Jonah this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. So this was after, you know, the Ninevites, you know, asked for forgiveness from God. They didn't argue. They didn't complain. You know, when he just told them, hey, you guys, it's 40 days. You're going to be destroyed if you don't do blah, 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 blah. And immediately, immediately, they turned away from their sinful ways. You know, they are fasting. They made the animals fast with them as well. And so, I guess Jonah was expecting them to kind of like disobey, you know, because to him like that was who they were you know arrogant disobedient and just 
you know, sinful people that he really didn't want them to uh, repent. He really wanted this city to be destroyed, y'all. That's how you can see, man, the head was real because he wanted them to really be destroyed. So after seeing, you know, like, after seeing them just, uh, you know, repenting and doing the opposite of what he thought they were going to do, he got angry. And I don't get him, like, what's with him and, like, wanting to die because it reads over here. Then he prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That this is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tanish. I knew you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abiding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. See? So, he's out here complaining like, Hey God, see, this is why I tried to run away. Because I knew you really were going to forgive them. And I was trying to avoid all this. Like, I did not want you to forgive this people. He wanted this city to be destroyed. Man, Jonah is a prophet of God. How can you be this angry with people how can you be this unforgiving how can you not be compassionate at all for God's people because even as a prophet you should want everyone to get saved the whole world and the whole world includes everybody it has no sights like oh I only want this to be saved and not this like no that is everyone in conclusion a whole collection all people. So him being a prophet and you know I don't get it because that is who God is, you know. God is all those things. He is gracious, compassionate, you know, he is slow to anger, he abides in love, he relents from evil from destroying and I love that that is who God is God would try to see if you can be saved first before destroying anyone or anything like that is not his nature to like just destroy people you know and and um when I send destruction and all that because at the end of the day like these people are God's children you know it's like who would want to you know destroy their child at the end of the day and just like oh just because my child isn't doing what I told them to do like I want them to die like no no parent said no parent ever if you could talk to as many parents today and say that hey would you kill your child just because they disobeyed you and did what you didn't want them to do? Like, no parent would ever say, like, hey, heck yeah, I want to kill my child and stuff like that. Like, no. So God is a parent, and I guess that's what Jonah was failing to see. God is a parent, and there is no parent that wants to see their child go a ro- down a wrong path or go down you know, distraction, and no parent wants to kill their child at the end of the day. No parent wants to see their child suffering and all that. So, if you don't get the the aspect of God being a parent, then truly, you don't really understand God because God is a parent. Therefore, he has the heart of a parent, and the heart of a parent is gracious, compassionate, slow in anger, and abiding in love towards their children. Amen? I had to preach there a little bit too because I'm like, man, wow. Verse 3. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Which is... You know, I was talking about as well too, like this man, he really, you know, wanted death to be upon him. Like he would rather die than seeing people repent, you know, from their sinful ways, which I don't get. Like, come on, Jonah, why would you rather die than seeing people repent? Because as a prophet of God, you should want to see people repent, you know. So like to me, his whole demeanor is kind of like... It's off-putting, like, I, 
I don't get him. I don't understand this. And I don't think it is right. You know, because any prophet, any true prophet of the living God knows that um, you should want, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone to be saved. Amen. But the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? Exactly. Like, man, like God was like, dang. <laughs> Like, wow, Jonah, is it right for you to be angry or right? That's what I want to know too. Verse 5, Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. So you could see like he was still hoping that something would happen to it. Like, why, Jonah? Then the Lord provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head. So that he grew thin. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I'm so angry I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant. Though you do not tend it or make it grow, it sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? And so you see in this, and that is the whole chapter, yo, but you see that God provides this example, you know, gives Jonah this example of a plant he made to give Jonah shed, you know, from the sun and heat, you know, as he was seated under it. And so, you know, for the purpose of teaching Jonah something, he's, he sends a worm that eats up the plant. And so when the plant dies and like Jonah saw, he's so angry, you know, he's like, man, like, you know, this plant was giving me shit and all that. Now I'm so angry I could die. Like, why is it dead and stuff like that? And then God asks him. And I don't even know if this was the second time or, or a third time that he asked him this question, you know, should you be angry? And so this time when he asked him, you know, if he should be angry about the plant and Jonah's like, yes. So God is like, see, shouldn't he, you know, feel the same way about Nineveh? Like, for real. If it is so easy for Jonah to be angry that the plant is dead, shouldn't God be concerned about this city of Nineveh, from, about people that, you know, don't know they are right from wrong? What a loving God. And that's why it ends, like, he doesn't... I wish there was more to, you know, to Jonah to see, like, well, you know, what answer did he give? You know, what did he say? Because I'm curious. <laughs> I am so curious. Yeah. And that is one reason why I would love to talk to him, you know, because I want to know, like, what did he say? You know, I'm, I'm sure by then he could get the whole picture, you know, together, I guess. But it must have been some rude remark or something like that, that uh, they didn't feel like adding more in here, you know, because... We know that he really hated the city, you know, and he really uh, just, I wouldn't trust him with anything, <laughs> to be honest. Like, I wouldn't trust Jonah with anything. Wow. And so, y'all can see from, just from this, you know, that God is so compassionate. And I love, 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 love that God is so compassionate, that he is gracious, that he is slow to anger, and that he 
abides in love and with love. And Jonah knows all this, you know. So he knew that, hey, the Ninevites, you know, God was going to forgive them. And regardless, like he just knew that it was going to turn out good for them. Which you should be happy about, you know. You should want God to forgive people as many as possible. Amen. And so, through this last chapter, we see the side of God, you know, that even Jonah knew from the beginning that we know of who our God is. And I, for one, I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful and proud of the Ninevites for, you know, turning away from the sinful ways, not arguing about it, not trying to be smart about it, not trying to uh, get out of it. Like, I am so proud of the Ninevites for, like, hearing this about themselves and, like, just wanting to, you know, turn away from their sinful ways. And I am so glad that God is a forgiving Father. And his compassion towards us. There is nothing like God's compassion towards us. And that is just who God is. Forgiving and loving and gracious. And at the end of the day. There is nothing like God's compassion towards us. And so I am so grateful. I am so grateful for who our God is. And if you are willing to turn away from your sinful words. Like the Ninevites did. Turn away from you not knowing about right or wrong. Then please repeat after me. Dear God. I know I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my Savior and follow him as Lord. From this day forward, guide my life and help me to do your will. Thank you for being gracious, compassionate, loving, and forgiving. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. And amen. And if you pray that prayer, I am so proud of you. God is so proud of you. And the angels sing and rejoice and say welcome. So, yo. Be blessed, be encouraged, and be fearless. I will chat with you guys again for a whole new season. I'm excited about this. I'm not going to leave any hints. (laughs) So you're just going to have to wait and see. Amen. Have a blessed day.